Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. Steve Nostantoski here of MGOFISH bringing you another episode of Recruit Review for Michigan's football class of 2020. Today, we're on episode six. We're looking at the four-star offensive tackle recruit out of California, none other than Jeffrey Percy. Thanks to the comments from Jacob Criswell and John Gallagher for their suggestion of Jeff Percy. If you have a suggestion for who you want me to cover in the next coming episodes, put in the comments below. I also have a poll up here, every single video for some of the suggestions you guys have suggested. You can put your vote there. I take all of it into consideration for who I choose to do next. You guys have been killing it recently, so I appreciate all the comments thus far. Before we get into this episode, MGO Fish's very own Harry Hillman has a feature with Jeff Percy himself. They had a discussion, a little interview, tons of great detail in that link. I'll put it in the description below. You can follow Harry on Twitter. That link will be in, in the description below as well. All right, let's get into it. So for his school, Jeff Percy is out of J. Sarah Catholic. Uh, his hometown is San Juan Capistrano, California. Uh, he spent two years as a tight end at Matter Day, the powerhouse, before transferring uh, over to J. Sarah. Uh, it was an academically driven transfer. Uh, Pat Harlow is a former USC and NFL offensive tackle. He's the coach at J. Sarah, and he was a big factor in the switch that Jeff Percy made from tight end to offensive line, where he spent two years uh, as a starter on varsity at left tackle. J. Sarah Catholic went 9-3 and three in Jeff Percy's junior year. That'd be 2018, where they lost in the playoffs to none other than Oak Christian. Uh, that's where Zach Charbonnet is out of. And then 6-5 and five in his senior year in 2019. So they're, J. Sarah is a really good nationally relevant program. They're usually in the top 10. They're playing top competition throughout the year. Uh, he earned all league and all state honors. Also played track and field. He did shot put and discus. Moving on to his ratings. All services have Jeff Percy as a four star. 247 and 247 composite have him around the 290 to 320 or so range. Uh, so rivals in ESPN probably have him in the mid 300s to get to that composite. Depending on who you ask, he's anywhere from 24 to 36 offensive tackle in the country. And he's right around 30th in California for the class of 2020. All services have him at 6'7", 265. From Harry's conversation with him recently, he's up to 6'8", 305. That might be padded a little bit, but if he's already at 300 pounds, that's a scary man. Looking at his metrics, so he has a 5.36 40 time, which offensive lineman, that's a pretty good time, not elite, but that's a good solid 40 time. His shuttle of 4.75 is pretty good. That would be 11th best for offensive lineman in the 2020 NFL draft combine. So very solid time at shuttle. I think that will show up in the film. And then vertical 24.2. Comparing against the NFL draft, it's, it doesn't really stand out, but that's not as important. Shuttle is really what you're looking for for an offensive lineman, and that 40 time uh, shows his athleticism quite a bit as well. Since he's an offensive lineman, no stats. So let's move on from there. So his offers. Being out west, every single program in the Pac-12 was going after him pretty hard. He had Oklahoma that was pushing for him as well. Nebraska, Ole Miss. Cal was the first offer he received. Washington was trending towards the top of his list as well. Northwestern offered. They usually don't offer unless they think they have a shot, so they were in it as well. That shows the uh, interest in academics that uh, that Jeff Percy really had. Finalists included Michigan, UCLA, and USC. So he was pretty late in his recruitment. He was first rated in February of 2019, so going into his final season, he really blew up in May of 2019 at the Super Lineman Tournament. I'll show a couple clips of that now where he won pretty much almost every rep. Uh, they bumped him up initially in July of 2019, 247 ratings, which is kind of a reaction to that camp. And then he had a big bump from uh, around middle 500s nationally to uh, 278 later that year. In his recruitment, he stopped talking to reporters because UCLA's dude was saying that being in Southern California, proximity to home was a factor. Obviously, it didn't end up being true. Uh, it did come down to USC versus Michigan. The relationship with Warner was a pretty big deal. Notably, the USC offensive line coach, Tim Drebno, uh, lost that battle. So, oops. But academics played a big role here as well, given the Stanford offer, Northwestern offer, etc. 
All right, let's go to scouting. So frame is what stands out most about this guy. So he was 6'7", 265 or so on his recruiting profile. It's already up to 300 according to Percy himself and Harry Hillman with their conversation. But everything you'll read about Jeff Percy and see probably in his film, he's athletic, he's nimble, showed some really, really solid feet. I love his footwork. Pretty comfortable and balanced out of pass block sets. I think he can improve, but... Uh, we'll get to that a little bit later. He uses his length very effectively. Really great intangible, so a low center of gravity. Plays with a mean streak. Finished blocks. That's something that's pretty underrated, I think, but always get to mention if, if a guy has it. And then, obviously, I mentioned high academics guy. That'll go a long way in, in learning early on his, in his career. So some of the downsides people mentioned was he's pretty raw, right? Only two years, really, in an offensive line uh, situation playing. He had the benefit of being at a larger program to learn and in a former NFL offensive tackle to learn from, but he's still young in his career. So there's lots of techniques still to learn. Lack of functional strength, especially in the upper body, he can still fill out. That's the scouting report at 265. If he's 305, I'm sure he's focused on that quite a bit. Depending on how quick he can get up to that weight, if he was already 300 pounds when he was receiving these rankings, they might be a little bit higher. So something to keep in mind. So recruiting analyst Greg B Biggins had a uh, interesting fact that a lot of the high NFL draft tackles are dudes that were 250 to 270 pounds in high school with shuttles in the sub 4.8 range. So that's Jeff Percy. So <laughs> watch it. From the article with Harry, it's clear that uh, Percy himself is very humble. Uh, he's a guy with a great work ethic and is pretty focused on, on getting to his ceiling. So those intangibles are, are seemingly there. Uh, if I sound optimistic, I promise I didn't make all of these up. This is mainly out there for you guys to find as well. But I've said enough. Let's watch some. Let's go to his film. Right off the bat, let me just say he improved a ton from his junior to senior film. And there's a lot of film. It's, I think, 12 minutes from his junior film, 16 minutes to his senior year. So his junior film was mainly this is an athletic guy who will be a really solid offensive tackle when he gets that technique and size. Senior film is, wow, he's figuring this stuff out fast. So that that's praise for his ability to learn. So let's first watch his stretch blocks here. So whether it's a rollout or a stretch outside with runs, I love his first step here. He really gets a lot of distance with that first step, not a whole lot of wasted movement here. And he's able to work around the edge and really drive once he gets that space. So this is using those that footwork, really quick step, getting that outside shoulder free using that shuttle time, that athleticism effectively on these plays. And he really improved a lot from his junior year in operating in space. Initially, he would get outside and not really ID guys very well once he was out there. Now he, he seems a little bit more comfortable operating in space, getting his, his shoulders around his hips in front of these guys and staying engaged throughout the play. So it's something that will really come in handy given his athleticism down the line and, and something I think he improved upon possibly the most from his junior to senior year. This next section is, is his second level blocking. So what I mean by that is driving on his first block, IDing the second target as a part of that block and getting to that target. So whether it's a double team and then shifting off to a linebacker or just a free release to that second level itself, he keeps his eyes up, he keeps focused on his assignment, and he's able to disengage and relocate really quick. Again, that's down to shuttle time, that's down to footwork, no wasted movement, and he's really showing that athleticism as a part of that. So again, that's a 4.73 shuttle time. It doesn't sound that fast, but that's close to top 10 in the draft. And combine that with his quick learning that he's having on correctly IDing the defense in front of him, right? Who do I have to go to after this double team, after this initial block in this defensive end? There's number 40. I'm going to get to him. So he's really improved a lot there, and I love the speed and athleticism of him in space there. I think it's something that will really come in handy moving forward. So they also utilize him in pulls quite a bit here. A couple clips I'll show. Uh, he didn't look as comfortable pulling as he did with free releases to the second level or on stretch blocks. He, he had a little bit more trouble IDing guys. With that frame, he, he won't be doing that in college. He'll, he's a true tackle. Um, but that athleticism still on display here. Makes sense they would use that in high school. Still a scary puller. All right, this next big section is strictly run blocking. So down blocks on defensive ends are undefeated with this guy. He... I think he has the athleticism to be 
a great pass blocker, but at this time, obviously in high school, he's out matching guys and he really can just bowl over a bunch of guys. So footwork is really good. I want to see improved hand placement. There's a number of plays where they can get a little bit outside the frame of defenders. So something to improve on there. Um, but he shows really good initial pop and that's really important. He's really just getting, he's affecting people immediately and driving. So he, he keeps his butt under him. He keeps his hips, um, under him as well. And that mean streak really shows in his run blocking. He, he, it, these plays result in a lot of path, uh, uh, in a lot of pancakes, willingness and affinity for finishing blocks. All right. And then pass blocking here. So good initial leg kick technique not really on that first play but moving forward you can see he gains depth pretty well and, and shows pretty decent technique there uh I, again i would like to see his hand stay inside he might get dinged for that later on i think his technique could improve a bit but still keeps solid balance engagement throughout the play initial technique into his pass pro is pretty great other little things like strength and hand placement are things that he can work on this will be a good transition into some of his negatives that he has which i i think are for more athletic defensive ends, he has to ensure that he is able to handle a diversification of, of pass rushes. But on rollout plays, like I, I mentioned earlier, he's great at getting that initial step out and really being able to uh, get in front of defenders on rollout passes pretty well. All right, so these are a couple negative clips from some of the camps that he's been to. Again, these guys are, are generally better than what he would see on a day-to-day -day basis on the high school football field. Overall, he did well at these camps, but these inside moves from some more athletic, smaller defensive ends, those are what really killed him. So I think this is just a, a case of being stronger. Um, you know, if you're not as strong, you're going to need to focus on technique more. And those are, are two things when going up against quick, elite guys. No wasted movement can, can happen if you want to compete with them. So as he gets stronger, as he gets better technique, he'll improve there on dealing with these more advanced moves from these higher end athletes. It's just a matter of when uh, than if for me. So my comparison for him is Ryan Hayes. Ryan Hayes was is an offensive lineman on Michigan's roster. He'll be a redshirt sophomore in 2020. He had two starts uh, as a redshirt freshman last year at, at uh, left tackle. Uh, he was really the sixth offensive lineman on the team last year he was four star he was Hayes was a four star about 335th nationally on 247 composite 23rd overall offensive tackle he's out with Traverse City so they're they're both kind of in the same range as a solid four star undersized tight end conversion into an offensive tackle athletic tight end with a frame to fill right that's the same kind of theme 247 was really high on Hayes though up to 140th nationally so given where Percy's already at it's likely he could have been ranked that high I'm not exactly sure why he wasn't seems like a, the whole package is there um, so I think Hayes is a good trajectory to watch to see where Jeff Percy will fill in and probably close to the same timeline. Now, as Harry Hillman said, he's, he's already up to 300 pounds. That could mean earlier time, but I think it's, it's the same sort of uh, concept there. If you want to be really lofty in your comparison, Hillman himself had him as Taylor Lewan. I'm not ready to go that far. That would be a great ceiling, obviously. All right, projection. So he's a guy who checks most boxes, right? He has length, ability, frame, brains, intangibles. Only things he's really missing is technique and maybe not bulk anymore, but that's what he was missing uh, towards the end of his high school year. Uh, so you can bet that with those four check boxes, he'll get there technique wise, right? This is a guy with Warner. That's a great, great guy to teach that technique. He specializes in this. There's been recent uh, recent recruits that Michigan have gone after for that tight end to offensive tackle mold. This is just another one of those, and that'll be great for him to learn from those existing guys as well as from Warner himself. Not registering an offensive lineman when you can should be a crime. They have plenty of options in 2020 to give him a red shirt, so they absolutely will do that if they're not. They're crazy. Given that he'll have at least one year to grow and learn some technique, 2021, he might see some spot action kind of as a that redshirt freshman, that sixth or seventh offensive lineman. 
2022 will really be a time when he'll start to emerge. At that point, Stuber will be gone. Mayfield and Hayes will be in their fifth year. And then you'll have kind of the other guys to compete against. Trent Jones, Trevor Keegan, Zach Zinter, and then any other 2021 kids that come in. But I would be surprised if he wasn't at least a one to two year starter it could possibly be longer if he's already up to 300 pounds ceiling is higher than even some of the recent michigan great tackles mason cole and john runyon jr those guys have limitations with their frame this is a frame that's gonna work <laughs> like six eight 300 pounds if you, if that's all good weight with that athleticism it's gonna be hard to beat man so obviously i'm being very optimistic here i'm really excited about this get i think it was a phenomenal phenomenal recruitment to get him on board uh he's a guy who if he were already at 290 or 300 pounds he'd probably be a top 100 recruit given that he doesn't have the technique i'll take a guy with that frame work ethic brains who just has to learn the position a little bit more than a guy at his ceiling with limitations so sky's really the limit with him it's more of a matter of when than if all right guys that's it for this episode thanks for watching as always if you haven't Please subscribe, like if you can, and comment with who you guys want to see. I take it all into consideration. I promise I do. Beyond that, guys, thanks again. Stay safe, wash your hands, and go blue.